29C games moments away as crowd starts pouring in. Philippines to host 2019 games, but not in Manila. A very good evening and welcome. I'm Adrian Seed. You're watching the evening edition of News on 2. Now, over 85,000 people are expected to throng at the National Stadium in Bukit Jalil to attend the opening ceremony of the Kuala Lumpur Sea Games, which kicks off tonight at 8 p.m. The stadium's entrances have been opened as early as 4 p.m. with pre-event programs beginning at 6 p.m. Early birds are taking part in a carnival activities which are organized within the stadium complex, with food trucks also being made available. Now we now uh, cross over live to Bukit Jalil with Mohana Priya for the latest updates. Mohana, what's happening over there? Well, Adrian, thank you. And I'm standing right in front of the Bukit Jalil LRT station. And as you can see, the crowd is pouring in. People are coming from all over the country to the Bukit Jalil National Stadium, and they've been urged to take the public transport. So that's why the crowd's here at the LRT station. Now, the newly renovated Bukit Jalil Stadium tonight will be hosting the glittering opening ceremony in about an hour's time. And we are seeing... Um, Malaysia hosts the SEA Games after 16 years. The last time we hosted this was in 2001. Now, KL 2017 is also being touted as the Green Games. So we have 5,249 trees being planted around the country to, commem to commemorate 5,249 medals which are going to be given out during the SEA Games. Now, there are 11 countries taking part in the SEA Games. 4,888 athletes are converging in 404 events taking part in 38 spots. Now, as you can see, the atmosphere is really lively and we've got people from all walks of life coming here. For example, please have a look at this. These are the unique type of um, activities going on. Supporters from, who are from Thailand, but who are supporting Thailand and Malaysia. So we have various people from all over. So we have people from all over Southeast Asia who are here to support the spirit of the Sea Games. And now Carlos, who is somewhere in the Bukit Jaya Stadium, or rather outside, I'm not too sure. Carlos, what's happening wherever you are? Tell us about it. Yes, Mohana, thank you so much. You're suffering there probably with the tons of people and we're also having millions of them here as well here in Ruma, Malaysia, right in front of the main stadium of Bukit Jalil. It's more like seconds away from the opening ceremony and right here, this is a place where you can actually come here and enjoy while waiting for something or while the games is going on, side events for everyone to take part. One of them is the Challenge Azizo. Ride a cycle and go as fast as you can and beat him. This is one of them. And here, not only Malaysians, we've got friends from other parts of Asia as well. We've got from the Philippines. I can see two guys with the shirts. Let's try and get them. Hi. Hi. What's your name? I'm Jonathan. And definitely from the Philippines? Yes, yes. Are you here alone? Oh, no, I'm with my friends, Ken and Justin. Hi, Ken. Hi. I'm Ken. Justin. All right, and you've been here for hours, or you just came, or what's happening? Um, actually, he's the first one here. He's here since the morning, and we just arrived about a couple of hours ago. <laughs> so is this your first time coming to a big meet like this? Yeah, actually, it's my first time, and I quite don't know what to do here. <laughs> okay. All right, and how long have you been in Malaysia? Uh, for five months. For here. We, we are working here in Malaysia. Excellent, so I guess you're all used to the food as well, yeah? Excellent. Anyway, we do hope you have a lovely time and enjoy the atmosphere here in Malaysia, right? And you're supporting definitely the Philippines. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Obviously. Thank you so much, guys. Let's try and find someone else right here because there are so many people. This is Remo, of course, our mascot. Hi, Remo. And who's this? Hey, hi. hi. What's your name? Uh, Akmal. 
And what are you doing here? Of course, I can see you with all your smile. <laughs> uh, so basically, I'm actually waiting for the opening ceremony. So as I uh, move walk along at the Bukit Jalil Stadium, suddenly I saw a big dome. Oh, then I said, oh, wait, that's the Malaysia. So I just come in, the group, oh, it's quite feel cool. Then it's, there's a lot of cool stuff here. For example, like I, I've tried the Azizo ride, uh, Azizo cycling. Right. That's quite really interesting. And that's the VR thing. So I said, oh, this is my first time actually uh, experiencing all of this. It's really fun here. Oh. So I, 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 I make sure for those who actually come into this stadium, make sure you come to this dome, the Team Malaysia dome, the Rumah Malaysia. So far, have you won anything? So far, I just won the, the bowling part. So I think I want to challenge Azizol again. All right. Excellent. So we've got six games here for everybody to come and enjoy. And before I hand over, of course, ladies and gentlemen, please follow us live on TV2 at 8 o'clock. All right? 8 o'clock, TV2 live. And before I hand over to Adrian, we'd like to thank our sponsors, UFL, for the lovely shirts that you've given all of us. Back to you, Adrian. Peter Carlos, thank you very much. And just before that, Mohana Priya, thank you. Elsewhere, the SEA Games today, the national Sepatakra team had to settle for a bronze medal in the Team Rugu event after going down three love to defending champions Thailand at the Titiwangsa Indoor Stadium in Kuala Lumpur this morning. It was the team's second straight loss in the round-robin format competition, having gone down 2-1 to Indonesia in their second match yesterday. Malaysia's first regu comprising Farhan Adam, Mohamad Hanafiah Dola and Mohamad Shahir Mohamad Rosdi lost to the Thais 15-21, 17-21 in the first game. The second regu was also not fortunate as they went down to the Thais in straight sets 10-21, 6-21. Malaysia's hopes of winning a Sepak Takraw regu team of silver suffered the blow after losing 9-21, 8-21 in the third game which later saw Indonesia took the silver while Malaysia had to settle for bronze alongside Brunei. Now the results saw Thailand continuing their stronghold on the goal which they have won at every edition of the games since 1993. The last time Malaysia took home the Sepak Takraw goal was in Manila, Philippines in 1991. Malaysia had finished second behind Thailand in the event at the Singapore Sea Games two years ago. In netball, Malaysia hammered Brunei 70-28 to in the semi-finals earlier today and will next play Singapore on Sunday for the goal after the defending champion beat a Thailand 55-43 to in the other semi-finals. Brunei was no match against Malaysia as the national team raced to an assailable 25-4 to lead in the first quarter. Brunei tried to keep up the scoreline, respectable in the second quarter, but to no avail as Tracy Robbins' team stretched their lead to 39-12 to through the attacking combination of Norashikin Kamal Zaman and El Karishma. Malaysia stamped their authority further in the third and fourth quarters with An Najwa Azizan, Aizian Shahzana Mohamad Wazir and Karishma combining together to deny Brunei any chance of getting back into the game. The national team eventually wrapped up the comfortable victory against a poor Brunei side with a scoreline of 70 to 28. And the Malaysian women's water polo team lost their chance of snagging a bronze today falling a 1 to 7 defeat to Indonesia in a round robin match. Take a look. The Indonesian team dominated the first and second quarter of the match held at the Bukit Jalil National Aquatic Centre with goals scored by Nyumku Ayu and Nes Fribrian Rashid in the first quarter. The Indonesians later scored another two goals in the second quarter via Siti Balkis and Hudaidah Kadir. Malaysia tried to rally back with one goal by Sarah Ann Trop in the third quarter, but a few more goals in reply by Indonesia saw the match eventually finish 1-7 in their favour. Meanwhile, Thailand defended its goal by defeating Singapore 5-1. The Malaysian contingent added another bronze when Muhaiza Muhammad 32 won a third place in the men's marathon category at the Kuala Lumpur Sea Games 2017 today, ending the country's 44-year-old marathon drought. Now, the medal obtained by the Army Commando from Sungai Udang Camp in Malacca is also the first backed by Malaysian athletics at the Sea Games this year. 
Muhaiza began the race with a strong stride but eventually fell back to the more experienced 2015 SEA Games gold medalist So Ri Yung from Singapore and Buntung Sri Song from Thailand. However, Buntung had to pull out of the race at the 31 kilometer mark due to a muscle injury, which was fully capitalized by Muhaiza and during the final four kilometers was neck to neck with fellow Malaysian runner Tan Huong Leong for the third and fourth spot. Making his final sprint to the finish line, he eventually bagged the bronze medal in two hours, 31 minutes and 52 seconds. Meanwhile, So Ri Yong defended the goal in two hours, 29 minutes and 27 seconds, while Indonesia's Agus Prayogo secured the silver at two hours, 31 minutes and 20 seconds. Saya harap lepas ni ada lagi lah muncul. Kalau lepas saya, insya Allah ada lagi orang akan sambung generasi ke generasi lah. Untuk maju sukan dalam Nonistan jarak jauh ni Sebab Malaysia dah lama tenggelam dalam jarak jauh Saya doakan uh, 5,000 uh, meter, 3,000 uh, middle okay. eastern dan okay. yang jarak jauh ni agak dapat middle Yeah, I think uh, it is uh, upon the MSN and the MF To train marathon is not uh, in a low altitude, you also go to high places Maybe like Cameroon, uh, Singapore, maybe a place like Africa, Kenya, something like that. Can prove a lot. The Malaysian runner who hails from Gurun Kada dedicated his win to his family, friends and all Malaysians who had supported him. Malaysia last won a medal in marathon at the 1973 Singapore Sea Games through M. Solaimutu securing the bronze. The Sea Games Federation has denied claims of the Philippines pulling out of the 30th Sea Games host after Capital Manila was announced as the official host city for the 2019 Sea Games. Philippines Olympic Council President Jose Coguango Jr. said they will change the host city to either Bulacan, where a new sports center has been built, or in Pampanga and Zambales, as Manila has a lot of traffic congestion. Commenting on the matter, the Secretary General of the Olympic Council of Malaysia, Dato Lao Beng Chu, said the Council has yet to receive an official letter from the Philippine Olympic Council. Tetapi oleh sebab berita-berita yang di luar itu, mereka telah dipohon untuk memuatkan satu pengumuman yang resmi, secara resmi lagi. Sebab dua tahun lalu mereka memang telah memuatkan pengumuman bahawa mereka tetap akan jadi tuan rumah. Dato Lau remained confident that Manila is capable to host the 2019 SEA Games based on their track record in hosting the Games three times, with the last one being in 2005. She was met after appearing on Selamat Pagi Malaysia on TV1. In other news, a digital initiative at a cost of 200 million ringgit to transform Langkawi's tourism, economy and community was launched by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak today. The Langkawi Digital Initiative aims to boost the island's 3G and 4G LTE internet coverage as part of a comprehensive plan to transform five main target clusters, smart economy, smart tourism, smart community, smart environment and smart security. Kadar Science Innovation, Information Technology, Communications and High Tech Committee Chairman Dato Sabrina Mohamad Noor said under the initiative, the island would be connected by a 152-kilometer fiber optic cable which links to 47 existing telecommunications towers and 10 more that will be constructed. Now, the allocation which was approved by the Communications and Multimedia Ministry will help boost the 3G and 4G LTE internet coverage on the island where currently the internet coverage is at 99% for 2G and 95% for 3G. Meanwhile, Dato Sri Najib also visited several of the exhibition booths at the carnival and also launched I Muamalat, a banking application by Bank Muamalat. A total of 40 exhibitors participated in the two-day event held at the Masuri International Exhibition Centre in Langkawi. The Pulau Pinang Barisan National should emerge from its comfort zone and be a strong opposition to win back the support of the people in the state before the 14th general election. Deputy Prime Minister Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said that the effort had not been fully felt by the people in the state which had caused BN to be defeated in Pulau Pinang during the last general election. 
Dato Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said many of the BN deeds and contributions in Pulau Pinang were denied by the DAP-led state government and it was now time for BN to use the issue to hit back at them for the sake of the people in the state. He is confident that BN will be able to win back Pulau Pinang with the cooperation of BN component parties and non-governmental organisations which are dissatisfied with DAP. DNA, DN, tiba masanya kini untuk kita bangkit bersatu di dalam saf kepimpinan Barisan Nasional Pulau Pinang dan kita rampas guna Pulau Pinang ini. Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid said this when opening the Tasik Gelugo AMNO Divisional Delegates Conference in Pulau Pinang today. Now, three people in the bus, including its conductor and two passengers, were injured in an accident involving an express bus carrying 26 passengers at kilometer 215.5 of the North-South Highway this morning. The driver, Osman Nadri Ismail, said that the bus, which was on its way from Johor Bahru to Kuala Lumpur, had skidded and overturned after it went out of control. Osman Nadri said that he had spotted something in front of him before the accident and had no time to avoid it. All the other passengers were later transferred into another bus. The drivers conducted suffered injuries to his hands, legs and knees. All three victims were later sent to the hospital for further treatment. Two people were killed while three others, including a former state assemblyman, were severely injured in a head-on car SUV collision at Jalan Kuala Kubu Baru, Bukit Beruntung this morning. Both the driver and the passenger of the Toyota Caldina who were killed on the spot were identified as Muhammad Radi Samsudin, 33, and Muhammad Khairul Azwan Madun, 30. Amongst the passengers of a Toyota Fortuner which had collided with the Kaldina were former Batangkali Assemblyman Adato Muhammad Isa Abu Qasim. The other two passengers of the SUV, a teenage girl and a man, were badly injured. Selangor Fire and Rescue Department Operations Assistant Director Muhammad Sani Harul said two teams from the Kuala Kubu Baru and Rawang stations were deployed to the scene after being alerted to the incident. It took about 40 minutes to douse the burning Kaldina before firemen were able to pull the bodies out of the vehicle. Six residents lost their homes when it was destroyed in a fire in Piasau, Miri, Sarawak this morning. Miri Fire and Rescue Department Chief Superintendent Lau Po Kiong said that the two-story wooden house was 90% destroyed. Law said a team from the Loping and Miri Fire and Rescue Department were rushed to the scene after receiving a distress call at 4.03 a.m. The Malaysian Civil Defence Force and staff from the Sarawak Energy Burhad also assisted in the operation. No deaths were, however, reported. The cause and total loss of the incident are now still being under investigation. And that item concludes this evening's News on 2. In our top story, Philippines to host 2019 Games, but not... In Manila, a program reminder, catch the live coverage of the opening ceremony of the 29th SEA Games at 8 p.m. right here on this channel, TV2. Join us again tomorrow at 12.30 for more updates. I'm Adrian Seed. Thanks for watching. Have a pleasant evening. Good night.